When I graduated from college, I moved to New York to take up my first job. And my roommate was an average white guy. He's a really good guy. A few weeks into living with him, he'll be like, oh, I'm texting this girl, da da da. And I'm like, really? That's cool. And I'm like trying to message girls and I'm trying to get some numbers and all of my messages go nowhere. And he's like texting this girl, she comes over, they go on a few dates. And then a week or two go by and, and like, I think it was like within a month, he was like, hey, I have a girlfriend now. And I'm like, oh, which one of the girls you've dated? He's like, well, this one. And her happens to be an Asian girl with a white guy. I know, cliche. And I'm just like, man, I can't even get one reply back. What's this guy doing? It took me years to figure out how to text women after that. That's the difference, right? Because he wasn't a good looking white guy. He was a he was a good guy, but he wasn't good looking. And I didn't think our social value was that different. But he knew how to talk to women. He knew how to text them. And maybe the fact that I was a minority did matter, but when you know how to message women, you just have a huge advantage. And so in this video, I want to talk to you about one foolproof messaging guide, okay? One way to message women without fail. The reason I want to make this video is because a lot of the dating advice out there on YouTube, TikTok, anything you Google, they only work for that type of guy, okay? So you got the white guy who's got the penthouse in Miami, and he's saying, hey, you got to text girls like this, right? There's certain types of girls in Miami in their nightlife and their party life. And there's a certain vibe to it. Might be another black guy or a white guy or a Spanish guy living in LA. And he's like, you got to do this. You got another guy who's good looking. He's buff. You know, he's, he weight trains. And he's like, you got to text girls like this, bro. And the, that's a problem because a lot, there are a lot of guys like me, I believe, if you're watching this channel, who are not buff, are not white, are a little bit fobby, or we're not that cool, right? We don't have these tattoos. We don't have, we don't have, we're not styled well. And we're just like, man, does this really work? And you try these lines and you're like, I'm not even like this guy. It's very incongruent. And then I start seeing a lot of female dating advice for men. While some of it is good, I can say that the majority of them are pretty basic. And also, it's, it's hard for a fish to tell you how to fish. That's a common saying. But a lot of the female dating advice, in my opinion, in their minds, it's like you're either ick or you're not. And they don't know that feeling of how to get from ick to, okay, I'll give them a chance. Okay, and that experience only happens when you're not the majority or you're not super good looking. You're a skinny, dorky guy who talks about nerdy things. How do you close that gap where you actually have a shot as a normal guy? You know you have a lot to offer, but you don't know how to get there. That's the problem that a lot of my clients have. And I think this needs to change, right? Guys who are smart, guys who have good intentions, guys who aren't buff, muscular, have tattoos or are just regular good guys, right? There needs to be a process for you to actually get girls out on dates and actually know what to do in a systematic, predictable way. So I wasn't good looking. I was skinny. Here I am on my birthday. I think there were like two other friends and we were both nerds playing at the library. This is not the same day, by the way. I just had this one outfit in college where it kept me warm in Boston and I thought it looked cool, but it didn't. It's like dad jeans and like some type of like sweater. <laughs> And here's how skinny I was back in college, right? So you can see where I started from, okay? Now, I want to introduce to you the concept of margin of error. If you're really good looking, your margin of error is really high. That means that you can make a lot of mistakes on text and the girl will still be like, he's hot, I'm going to go meet him. But the less good looking you are, the less you fit into the stereotype of this is a guy I should date in, in the landscape of like media and dating and pop culture the less your margin of error is in other words if you make one mistake if you make one wrong move you're out of the game so keep this concept in mind as we talk about this because the texting technique i'm going to give you allows you to have a small margin and still be able to move it forward the good news is if you're low margin right if you stay with it over time because the guy with a high margin he can make a lot of mistakes and still get the girl he doesn't know what he's doing wrong so eventually when he meets a girl he really likes, or he meets that girl that a lot of guys who have a lot of game are competing for, he doesn't know how to get her. But when you're low margin, every move you make, you get feedback on your mistakes right away. Damn, I shouldn't have leaned forward. Damn, I said the one wrong word and she's not interested in me anymore, right? Over time, you, you know exactly what you're doing wrong. And each thing you do wrong, it's like a kind of a, one of those like mind sweeper. So you just know what to not to do. And, and so over time, you just become very precise in your game. Because your margin is so low, you have perfected your methodology to a point where even you have low margin of error, you still do the correct things to get the girl out and get a chance to get to know the real you. These are just some of the girls I've dated. This one, beautiful girl, met her online. This girl I met at a, on the bus, funny enough. 
but I texted her properly and I got her out. This girl I met online, this girl I met in person, and I dated her for a while. Of course, there are calibrations on your end and the girl's end, and a lot of people don't talk about this. So as a guy, your looks matter, congruence matters. So it's like, do your pictures make sense? Do they tell a story? Is your description showing who you really are rather than who you're pretending to be? The country you're in matters, the sex ratio matters, the culture matters, your game skills are universal. The age range matters, right? Whether you're going girls 21 plus or 18 plus, 30 plus and 35 plus, their needs are different. The things they think about are different, okay? And there's a di- huge variety of girls and different methodologies of messaging them uh, have different results with different girls. What I'm about to show you works in every single one of these categories because it casts a large net that captures all the variations. That being said, your looks do matter. And so, of course, if you want to improve your style, right, no matter how you look now, then check out my Seduce with Style course where I talk about the style attraction triggers that got me from a nerdy guy to actually decent looking, even got me into Fashion Week, okay? And it will help you smoothen a lot of the bumps you're going to face along this journey. We've all seen the uh, hotness versus crazy graph, right? So this is kind of a funny viral video, but actually there's a lot of truth to it. So again, everyone has different qualities. Some guys like curvy girls, some guys like skinny girls, some guys like overweight girls. So I'm not defining your 10. But we have to be realistic as far as this is what the market values based on the data that's available, right? Most guys prefer girls that are skinny slash curvy know how to dress and smell good, et cetera, et cetera, feminine qualities. What I'm going for, right, basically my whole way of um, interacting, gaming, if you want to call it that, is just like how can I get girls that are here in this area where I can meet potential girlfriends that are stable, that are good in bed, that doesn't cause a lot of bad drama. And then when I was younger, I would be like, I want this, but I kind of want to experience this, right, because it's fun. And in my 20s, and I'm just like, I don't know what this is like, and I want to experience this. And so... Basically, my text game is like, how do I capture girls in this area consistently? And I can decide if I want like a more serious thing or a more casual thing. And maybe I have a few casual things until I find the serious thing, okay? So that's kind of been my goal. Every once in a while, you'll find a unicorn, but this is a good zone to be in, okay? So then with that type of game, it works even if you're nerdy and skinny like me. It works on high-class girls that are educated, but it also works on girls that are like bartenders, you know, exotic dancers, etc. I'm going to give you the text, but before I do, there are some concepts that you, you need to understand. The way you message them is based on her perception of her social value, okay? So for example, they're 49ers, like a four who thinks she's a nine, especially in the Bay Area. You have to game her as she's a 10 because she believes she's a 10. And that area, because of the difference in the sex ratios, she believes she's a 10. So unless you're going to move away, you have to game her like she's a 10. Now, it might not be a 4, right? Guys may not want a 4, but maybe it's a 7. A 7 in New York, but a 10 in the Bay. And you're like, damn it, I want the 7 because there's nothing else better. But I got to game her like a 10, okay? Conversely, there are girls who are 10s, right? Usually not often, especially not in LA. But you can tell she's beautiful, but she's humble. But she thinks she's like a 5 or 6. And then you can't run like very aggressive player game because she's she considers herself a 5 game is played between what she thinks her value is relative to her perception of your initial value when you first meet or when you first match. This is why we don't want to put girls on a pedestal. We want to just assess and observe. One of my clients prefers girls that look like this. You know, some girls like actresses in LA. Other guys like girls who are really curvy. Okay, so whatever your 10 is, is fine. But you have to be realistic in terms of this is my competition. Right? I would say this girl has a lot of competition. This girl has a lot of competition. This girl probably will not have a lot of, you'll not have a lot of competition if you like these type of girls, which is good for you, right? And you're entitled to whatever you like. Really important concept, after you meet face-to-face, let the games go, right? This whole idea of social value, sexual marketplace value, we talk about it because it's like economics, right? It's the same way we talk about at Google. Let's say we get 100,000 applications a day. We have to judge them by their paper qualities, your GPA, their school they went to, because I don't have time to personally get to know 100,000 people. But once you get into the interview, you can sit them down and be like, you know, tell me, I really want to know. Who are you, right? So my goal is to know, teach you how to play this game up to the point where you can sit down with her and finally get a chance to just show her hey, I'm this type of person. Who are you? And she's open to that, right? Some people might see it as, oh, this is very manipulative or you're just saying these lines over and over again. But really, it's kind of like a job interview. 
I'm gonna shape my resume a certain way. I'm gonna say these things because they work. They get me to the next step. At every little interjunction, as I become better, I can inject a little bit of my personality without breaking the rules of engagement of that social process. And then I get to a point where she's a real person. And every girl I date, I always maintain the possibility that we can still be friends. It doesn't have to be a dating situation if it doesn't work. So I treat people like human beings, but if you're like lonely and you're not seeing anybody, you need a process to get to a point where they see you as a human being. And this is why in structure, there's freedom. If you know what to send, if you know what to do, you can get a chance to connect with people in a real way. When you don't, and I speak from personal experience, it feels like there's this invisible wall. Everyone's like kind of nice to you, kind of like that Joker smile, but they don't really care about you. And you just feel very lost and very alone. And I know that had I not gotten the help I, I received, perhaps I would have gone down a very dark path. And I don't want that to be your future. That being said, okay, my text game is designed to weed out the party girls and the fame addicted girls. But if you want to flirt with them, you can't. I want you to flirt with anyone you want, but you know what they're thinking. And I want to also give an opportunity also to go after high quality girls who are attractive, smart, but also have their stuff together. Some examples, this girl I have a date with, it's funny enough, her pictures, you may think she's kind of a player, but our conversation, she was like, are you, what are you looking for? And I'm like, I'm looking for a serious relationship. And she's like, oh, thank God, me too, right? You wouldn't be able to tell from her pictures. This is one of my girl, former girlfriends. Very beautiful, very smart, but also like just doesn't go to clubs, like doesn't drink that much. Now this girl's a little crazy, but this girl, you know, Christmas party with um, my friend's mom. Very formal, very polite, very nice person. So all sorts of girls are possible with this type of technique. Okay, Giovanni, I'm about, you're about to teach me your uh, unbreakable, you know, texting method. Great, but... But, you know, I've been doing this thing. It kind of works. So I listened to this coach. This, I, I think this works. Are there other methods? Let's play devil's advocate, right? So when I graduated, like the American guy who kind of has some social skills, he can go out and he can just use generic openers. Hey, how are you? Do you come here often? Just ask like 10 questions, right? When I got into modeling, I read a lot of um, model, model autobiographies. And the male models, it's so funny. There was one quote. I think it was like, his name was Bruce. And he said, um, my friend taught me how to pick up girls and all he says is keep asking questions and when you ask the, up to 10 questions, you got the girl. What do you do for work? Do you like what you do? Where'd you grow up? What's your favorite hobby? Now those things can work if you're good looking, if you're a majority, um, but it may not work for you if you're not that. The good guy game. This is a guy who takes his time, you know, he wants to court the girl. You see a lot of these guys at church. It does work, but it takes a lot of time. Now, if you're super religious and whatnot, this could work for you. Um, but if you want to experience like, you know, dating around and dating different types of people to find out, you know, what you like and what you don't like, this is not a good approach in my opinion. Player game are those type of guys you see on reality shows. Love Island, you know, too hot to handle. These guys lie a lot. They manipulate women. They gaslight. It's hard to learn. You can get laid a lot, but it, I think it kills like a part of like, empathy and in, into this process and i just don't like it a whole game is interesting kind of a player but it's like super aggressive player who's there's a lot of like m emotions you can see the girl slap the guy and then later on that night she'll go home with him um it's very volatile and then you're like are you guys dating what's going on and a few weeks go by there's like fights and then they get like crazy sex fight so it's very volatile i don't like this type of game i try learning it and i realized it wasn't congruent to who i am that being said it's a very fine it's a very low margin game where it's like a fine line of emotions and it can be very technical. Nice guy game, a lot of Asian guys do this. If I'm loyal to the girl, if I have faith, she'll eventually realize that she likes me. In Asian culture, this is a big one. In my opinion, in my humble opinion, it's too low of a return on investment given your time and effort. And then sex is a wait and see game. You know, it's like, oh, it's okay. Sex is not a big deal. I'm going to focus on my career. And there are certain periods in your life where that's important. It's not active. You're not actively doing something. You feel like you have no control. And it's like, that's why guys say, I got lucky. You know, no, it's not you got lucky. It's because you have a consistent system to get girls out. If you're having problem with these messages, these messages are not the problem because we already tested these messages with, with hundreds of clients. So eliminate that variable. It could be your style, it could be your non-verbals, okay? It could be a lot of things, but it's not the messages. Online dating is not going away. We know that women get exponentially higher number of messages received than men, even at the most attractive level. We know that online dating is rising and will continue to rise. So this is something you have to learn. 
Now, the good news is if you can figure this out, you can scale two things that human beings haven't been able to scale without technology in history, distance and time, right? So you can match with girls all in your 50-mile radius to 100-mile radius, and you can just you know, sit at home and do that, and you can save time if you know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, you waste a lot of time texting, but if you know what you're doing, it leverages your time for dates without having to go out all the time. These messages are training wheels, right? As you use them, you'll develop your own style. So understand the principles and don't be a clone. The good news is most guys don't know how to message women. Most guys are pretty lame, pretty bad. Okay? It's, if you don't believe me, ask any decently looking girl who's a friend of yours to see if she can like send, see her messages and you'll see her Bumble, her Tinder, her text messages and you'll see like how bad it is out there. I talk about this funnel in my course. I won't talk about it too much here. But basically, they're, they're, there's a very specific sales funnel. And if you understand this funnel, you can convert at every level and you'll know how to set updates consistently. Of course, your style in, increases your margin of error. And if you want to learn how to do that, you can go to high integrity skills slash style four and you can download um, eight style traction triggers for free that show you how to put together your first look. We also want to service attractive pics where you use AI to increase your attraction score. This picture ranged from starting with a four all the way to a seven, right? AI is getting to a point where it can render realistically looking attractive pictures of you. Following is a mix of private and my own texts. Press one for character defining question or two for funny pickup line. Now the reason we developed this message was because we wanted to screen out whether the girl needs attraction or more connection building, right? Women want need these two emotions. And we wanted the, the message to be easy to reply to, so it's easy for her to take action. And we tested this hundreds of times against other openers, and this one had the best response rate. One other one had, had an equal high response rate, but this one allowed us to capture a lot more different types of women, and I'll explain why in a second. The girl right here, this is a stunning girl. You can't see, really see her profile pic, but this is like, because I would consider like a nine or 10. This girl, is, I, I think this is from a client. Hey, press one or press two. And she's like, can I have both? It's like so greedy. Which one do you want first? Press two, right? So this opening makes it very easy for girls to message you back, okay? And it's almost like a little bit curious. Like, what's he going to say next, right? So it's fun. It's mysterious. It's easy to reply to. You're making it easy for her to engage with you. If she presses one, then I asked my client, you know, go find a joke that you personally would laugh at. And his joke was, why does pup my puppy float? Why? Because he's a good boy, okay? He likes puppies and it's, it conjures images of like fluffy puppies swimming and floating, okay? And then I here I use a voice note to tell the joke and she was like, that was very unexpected. So I think my joke, I think for this one, it was pretty funny because I, I didn't really care about the outcome because I already had like other options. So I think I left a voice note. If I recall, it was like, your father, he, he, he take the star and he, 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 put, he put the star in your eyeball. And then I paused for a second. I'm like, I'm just fucking with you. I, I speak English. What's up? <laughs> right? And then she was like, oh my God, I can't believe you said that. So look, I'm using my race as an advantage rather than a disadvantage, right? There's a lot of options here, the point is. And you can find a joke that works for you. Now, if she presses two, that means that she's more into like, I want to get to know this person. She's a little bit more introspective. This client in particular, she, he's already very successful. And he's looking for girls that are more down to earth, that don't care about like this whole Instagram BS. So he's like, would you want to be famous in what way? Right? And taught him how to do that. And what's funny is these girls are like, I wouldn't want to be famous. And he's looking for girls that are like, wouldn't want to be famous. Or she's like, I want to like cure cancer, but I like, like, they want to be famous for like helping humanity move forward because he's involved in that field. He's actually like kind of like a scientist engineer, right? So respect, no social media. So you see, press one or two, two. Would, what would you like to be famous? I wouldn't. That would take too much time, right? So now you're getting to see like a little bit of their personality, okay? And you can guide the interaction forward to qualify for the type of qualities that you want in a woman. Let's say you're looking for a girl who's adventurous. What is the most adventurous thing you've done that's not a cliche, right? Or where's the most exotic place you visited and what did you do there? If you're into girls who are into video games, just curious, what's the most nerdy thing about you, right? Or, or have you ever played, what's the video game you played that you most enjoyed as a kid? Now, if she does something else, if she's like, can I have both? It's good because she's still complying and she's playing the game. I'll take option two for 100, sir. And the fun thing about these messages is it also tests the girl to see if she, she's witty and she's banterous 
a lot of women aren't very good at messaging. They just kind of, oh, I'm hot, I don't need to message. But you can see their personality if they do. Now, defiance is when she's like, press one or two, she's like 69 or 105. She's like, do I have to play this game? We have analyzed hundreds of my messages, at least in the States. None of the girls that uh, had a defiance reply I ever was able to get on a real date. It's much easier to get a girl out who's compliant to continue the conversation. Because she's basically, if you think about it, she's like, I'm willing to play with you. And the other girl's like, I'm going to give you a hard time. Right off the bat, right? So right off the bat, you got to think about if that's how she is right off the bat, how is she going to be like later on? It's kind of like going to a job interview and like, hey, why do you want this job? Oh, I needed the money. I'm just kidding. What's up? It's like, well, this guy's unprofessional. It's my personal opinion, but I also found for my clients, they're like, yo, the girls that really like me, they respond with one or two or both, or they're really excited to play, right? And the nice thing about that is that if the girl's defiant or she gives you a random number, you can kind of just screen that out as like, she's never going to go out with me anyway, okay? You might have a different experience, but I'm just telling you that I've analyzed already a couple of hundred of messages, and I've never been able to get a girl out who was defiant, who answered a different number. Then after that, you move it forward, right? Two, well, where would you like to be famous? And then he said, I'm not chasing fame myself, but if it happened, I would want it to be for helping people. Again, because he's an engineer, he's changing the world, literally. Being successful over being famous. And she's like, yeah, for sure, right? And then he said, quick question, croissants or healthy smoothie? Because he's also very into like longevity and health. And she replies and they set up a date. Here the girl said, I'm not want to be famous. And she, he's like, good answer, plus 10 points. There's a secret prize when you get to 50. This is one of the lines you learn from my course. Okay, check out the links below. I agree, we'd rather just be successful in my own life rather than flaunt it around. You can see this girl's, you know, I like this girl. Quick questions, coffee, and she's like, I can't have caffeine, so smoothie with a croissant. The less good looking you are, the faster you want to go off the app. The reason is, when you go off the app, you stop this like association that he's just another guy on a dating app right? And she starts seeing you more as like a real human being. Okay, again, as this is a game where we're playing, at least for now. The other reason you want to go off the app is that a lot of people turn off app notifications and they don't check, okay? Especially on the weekends. So here, you know, because he's a good boy, that's very cute. Sorry, I'm never on here. And he's like, I'm not, I don't check either, right? So this is another technique, right? It's like rather than, oh, really? That's cool. It's like, hey, me too. Right? It's a disqualifier to a disqualifier. Then he got her number. So, excellent. One last thing. We're planning world domination over coffee with croissant or drinks with dessert. Dinner with drinks? Sushi. Okay, so he's rich, right? So he doesn't care. So, I mean, for me, it would have been like, well, let's get tea first and I don't drink. But, and I shoot me your number and she did, right? So you, basically, it doesn't take that many messages. A lot of guys are like back and forth forever. No, you don't really know her until you meet her in person, right? This whole persona of the online fantasy is just not real. Don't treat it. Don't give it so much investment. It works with all kinds of girls on all kinds of apps, right? We went on an app where the girls were like very, very hot. You can see here this works. And it's funny, this girl who is very sexual, she's like, I like picnics too, or I like getting super dressed up, right? So she's giving him options. I love that so much. And here, this girl, very different type of girl. I prefer a simple date involving wine and great conversation. This girl, super hot girl, right? That's a good one. And she's like, what does your ideal first date look like? And she's like, well, I prefer this. Here's another example of moving off the app, right? Here, this is the most difficult decision of my life. I think he asked her to choose between croissants or smoothies. Croissants are never optional. Haha, ha, shimmy your number and maybe we can set up a date with mandatory croissants. Sounds good. The reason we use that opener is because it flex, it's flexible. It captures a large types of different types of women in different moods and it allows them to initiate contact and respond to you very easily. The transition, you can just let her lead. Does she want more attraction? Does she want more comfort? And then you can qualify her. And she's to give you the answers to her heart, okay? And you're making it easy for her to reply to you. We've seen this pattern over and over again. If you're not above average in your looks or at least your, your pictures, right? AI generator or otherwise, you need to build some attraction, okay? Otherwise, guys who are already past that bar, usually the girl pick number two and they build more comfort or they pick one and then they jump into like more deep conversation. And then you move that interaction forward. Generally speaking, I, I advise you to move off the app smoothly. You've seen examples of how to do that. And then setting up the date smoothly. You've seen some examples here on how to do that. Rinse and repeat, man. Do not linger. Do not make it more complicated. A lot of guys go back and forth because they get that dopamine hit. Like, finally, the girl's responding to me. And it's fine if you want to just practice your messaging. That's okay. 
I think in the future you'll have AI girls that you can practice with. But just move it off and just get to date, okay? And keep in mind, you don't know the person, you don't know her. So don't build up in your fantasy like this is how she is until you meet her, even until you date her a few times, you don't really know who she is. Do not build up the story in your head from just online dating, texting, even video chats. You gotta hang out with the other person. Anybody that tells you otherwise, like like on that Reddit, like the long distance relationship thing, personally, I think it's BS, or I think those guys have no options, and so that's why they do long distance. You cannot know someone, in my humble opinion, through video, chat, texting, you need to hang out with them face to face. Do you want more messages? Do you want to know what else you can send and troubleshoot? What if she sends this? What if she sends this? Check out high status messages. It's my entry level course. I think it's only $7 right now. You can go to high integrity skills slash seven. Go I met from online dating. Go I met in person. One thing I want to tell you to be honest is that online dating for me has always been a supplemental flow of uh, leads, right? Until I find my girlfriend. In person, I believe results per hour, if you know how to do cold approach, it's much better. You see the girl, you know you like her already, you're not wasting time wondering if she looks like her pictures, okay? In person, I've been able to make friends, I just enjoy so much more. That's me personally, but I also never depended on online dating only. If you want to know how to do that, in First Day Formula, it's my master course, 10 years of my experience building social circles, doing online dating, Cold approaching, I'll break down my infields of how I talk to women, how, what I do on dates, everything you need to just transform your dating life. Go to high integrity skills slash 33. You can download 33 lines there for free. There are 33 attraction and banter lines to help you build that momentum and emotional charge so you can take it further. And that's it, guys. Okay, so this is just one message from like the 35 messages in my course and then the thorough 101 lessons in my full master course first day formula try it out these messages do work if they're not working it's not because of the messages because we've already tested them with hundreds of clients let me know how it goes in the comments i hope this lesson was useful for you if it was give it a thumbs up you may want to subscribe to my channel where i put out more lessons like this so you can really improve your social interactions and your dating life and once again you know it's been a pleasure and i'll see you in the next one